just having some fun talking about J.J. Watt's use of social media. And there certainly are times when Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever other social media services you might use, Snapchat, there are times when social media plays a positive role in our culture. I'll give you that. It can connect people who might otherwise never cross paths. I mean, that's happened in my own life, both personally and professionally. It's led to friendships because theoretically it it makes the world a little smaller. It certainly is a way for us to have access to people that we admire or people that we're interested in. I think of the ice bucket challenge and some of the other viral charitable causes and charitable adventures that have been promoted and passed along via social media. All good stuff. I was just talking about J.J. Watt and the money he raised almost entirely on Twitter for the people who suffered with Hurricane Harvey. And, And that's just one example of ways that money is raised to help those who are in need because the word reaches so many other people through social media. Certainly pet photos, baby animals. In fact, I was just looking at uh, the transporting of a four-year-old panda from the National Zoo in D.C. to his home in China. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you can get on social media and the internet that uh, we might not otherwise be able to see. But there are also times when social media breaks my heart. When people use it in ways that it was never intended to bully, to, to cowardly criticize when you would never say those same things to another human being in person. That's how you know it's cowardly. People use it to rage and vent in the heat of emotion. This is their outlet. And unfortunately, in sports, we see examples of this time and time again. I was stunned, though at the same time, not surprised at all, if that makes sense. Every time I see it, every time I hear about this type of activity, it blows me away. Because I can't imagine a human being getting so wrapped up in a damn football game that he or she loses his or her mind and actually threatens another human being via social media. I just, it, I can't fathom it. At the same time, it's common enough that we've all heard about it. We've all seen it. It happens every year. In the NFL playoffs, when one particular, oh, Cody Parkey is a great example. The Bears kicker last year with the double doink. But going back to, was it Kyle Williams? Do you guys remember the San Francisco 49ers NFC Championship against the Seahawks a few years ago? And he botched a punt. Will you, I, well, just look that up. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, pretty sure that you can find it just with a Google search. I would if I weren't talking. I, I just remember... That young man getting bombarded by threats and dark, nasty stuff on social media because he mishandled a punt and because the world was watching and the world felt entitled. And I know that those people who would send death threats on social media are certainly in the minority. And yet it happens enough that we know it's more than one human being It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio. The latest is Penn State sophomore quarterback, Sean Clifford. This is a kid. He's a kid. Not to mention, his football team is 9-1. and He's passed for nearly 2,500 yards. He's got 22 touchdowns and six interceptions. 
It just so happens that three of those came in the loss against Minnesota, the first loss of the year for the Nittany Lions. He said he got on his social media, Twitter and Instagram, and there were so many, not one, not two, there were so many death threats and vulgar messages that he deactivated his accounts. We're not talking about one person in a fit of rage. We're talking about enough people that he actually reported it to campus security and to the police. It's unfathomable and certainly unconscionable that people can get so outraged over a stupid football game. It's not life or death. It's not the fight against cancer or Alzheimer's. It's not the war in the Middle East. Put yourself in the position of this young man or how about his family? If you can't identify with Sean Clifford or you think he's a public figure because he plays quarterback for a high profile university, how about put yourself in the shoes of his mother or his father or his sister or his best friend or his roommate? It's a stupid football game. It matters none. Next weekend, there will be dozens more football games. Who cares? It's entertainment. It's sports. It's not important. And yet somehow people lose perspective and threaten a kid because he threw three interceptions in a game. Seriously, somebody wants to call up and tell me how that matters in the grand scheme of life? But to get so wrapped up in your emotion that you actually pull out your phone, you type up, or, or you're on a laptop, you, you type up a death threat, and then you hit send without once thinking that might be the most idiotic thing you've ever done. I, I just don't know how that happens. How a human being can do that. So I'm going to offer you this. If you've ever tweeted or posted some type of message that you regretted on social media over a game, okay, so I'm not talking politics, I'm not talking about anything else other than sports. If you've ever done that and then later realized, what the, what did I just do? And you were ashamed and embarrassed? I'd like to hear from you. Although I suspect that no one who's actually issued a death threat to a sophomore college quarterback is going to be brave enough to admit it. And that's the part that I always come back to. These football fans who get so wrapped up in a loss that they can't see straight would never stand in front of Sean Clifford in person, in the flesh, and threaten him. Why? Because it's ridiculous. Because you can't take yourself seriously when the person's standing there looking you in the face. So Sean Clifford made his comments to the media on Tuesday. And from what I understand... He has since reactivated his social media accounts. So he deactivated them for a while. They've been reactivated. I can imagine there's been an outpouring of support now. And while we couldn't find the audio of his comments, so I think it was some type of a conference call maybe, we couldn't find that audio. His head coach, James Franklin, did address what was happening with his QB in his press conference. It's troubling. I think it's it's concerning for all of us, and I think that's sometimes where, you know, um, where I maybe get upset sometimes, and maybe I shouldn't, and and ask you guys some questions. But that that's kind of where these things are coming from. I know I know the power that you guys have, um, and um, I'm not. I don't want you guys to take it the wrong way. I'm just saying that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, things things get get extreme. 
Well, that's true. Social media is extreme. And as I often say, it's the opposite of social. I really think it separates us more than it brings us together. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence here on CBS Sports Radio. When I tweeted about this on Tuesday afternoon, I mean, you know, we're talking about a tweet, right? We're talking about words on a page. And so you can't always communicate your emotions effectively. But what I said is, is similar to what I've said to you in these past few minutes. It's beyond ridiculous that a college athlete has to delete his social media because the death threats and vulgar messages won't stop. And a, a few of you responded with, oh, but look at the climate in our country. Look at what famous people do. Look at politics. You know what? That is such a cop-out. We're not robots. At least I'm not. I don't care who uses their social media to bully and to criticize and to vent their frustration without conscience. It would never, ever convince me that it was the right thing to do. We have brains. We have souls. Just because somebody else is doing it doesn't mean you have to. And this whole idea of, oh, they're never going to read my post. Great. Well, then why put their name in it? Why put their Twitter handle in it? How about you just vent to your six followers and keep it to yourself? Or better yet, throw your phone in the river. Don't pick up your phone. That's what I mean about social media. It doesn't bring us together. How about that? Football fan who issued a death threat, run it by his family members first. Oh, here, this is what I'm thinking of tweeting. Or a friend. Because you know what? Nobody in their right minds would tell you that's a good idea. Not to mention it's criminal. These days there are more and more laws that govern the internet. And if you make a specific explicit threat to another person on social media, in many states you've committed a crime. I mean, I just it just takes a minute, two minutes. Phone a friend, baby. Ask them. Should I do this? I get it. Sports fans are not known for being rational. They're not known for being logical in the heat of the moment. But it's still just sports. No matter how important it is to you, no matter how much you think the sky is falling, it's just a damn game. So I'm glad that Sean Glifford has reactivated his accounts because I wouldn't want him to not be able to communicate with his own friends or or to have that platform. But I also hope that this is a lesson and that the people that sent him those threats are thoroughly embarrassed. And I hope outed too. I hope that before they have a chance to delete their messages, they get exposed. They earned that. It's After Hours on CBS Sports Radio. 